The first process demonstrated in this video is when faculty are preparing the tanks and turning the central system on for student administration at the beginning of clinic. You'll notice the red blinking light indicating the system is OK but off. The first two tanks are oxygen and they are in green. The second two tanks are nitrous oxide and they are in blue. Each one of these tanks has to be opened fully for the system to work safely. When faculty are opening these, they will rotate them fully to the left and then turn them back a quarter rotation. Significant resistance is found when opening these knobs, so please confirm they are fully opened. You will remember from pain control that nitrous oxide gauges may not demonstrate the exact fill level of the tank. However, oxygen gauge might be more accurate based on the type of gas. If we look more closely at one of the gauges for the oxygen, you will see it says use no oil. Make sure you're using no lubricants or oils near these gauges or openings due to flammability. Here's a nitrous gauge. The next system is the emergency shutoff valve. Faculty would be required to shut this off in the case of an emergency. So the valve levers are pulled outward towards you to shut off the oxygen and the nitrous oxide system. This would be the main panel where you're going to turn the system on. You can see that there are many lights, off on button, and instructions. If you come down to the lower area, you'll be able to see the instructions for turning on. You've already seen the video about opening the valves. We're then gonna depress the system button to turn that on. What you're gonna see is a yellow blinking light. That will now prompt you, are the tanks on? The answer is yes, the tanks are on. So we're going to press that again. Then what you're gonna notice is that when the system is on and everything is fine, the light is red. I like to do a test. So what that told me is that all the tanks are on, that all of the pressures are normal, and again, the light is red. So when the light is red, the system is on. So once you have the system on, the light will be red on the panel. However, the light will be yellow on this system inside the tank room. So you can see this is demonstrating that all the tanks are ready to go. Once you've completed medical history, vitals, and determined there are no contraindications for nitrous oxide, you will retrieve the nitrous oxide informed consent, have the patient read this, have the patient sign it, as well as the clinician, the faculty member, and the dentist must sign it. Once this is fully filled out, you may take this form to retrieve the other supplies you will need. That will include if you are using a digital unit, a power cord, analog unit, which doesn't require a power cord, a nasal hood, and a pulse oximeter. To prepare the digital unit, you need to plug the power cord into the back of the flow meter and into the wall socket. You will then attach the vacuum cord to the high-speed suction to connect the scavenging system. You will turn the suction on. You will hold the gauge up vertically and check to see that it is in the green. 
You will then attach the nitrous oxide and oxygen, oxygen tubing to the central wall plate. You can check the color code and pin size system to confirm you are placing it in the wall correctly. You will directly press until you hear a click and then gently pull back to confirm that it is secure. This is the analog unit. You will need to use the vacuum tubing to connect to the high speed suction. You will turn on the high speed suction and check the vacuum gauge to make sure the scavenging system is working correctly. Once you've confirmed that that system is working correctly, you will attach the tubing for nitrous oxide and oxygen to the central panel. You will note that the oxygen again is on the right in green and the nitrous is on the left in blue and the Accutron word is facing upward. You will push straight in until you hear a click and gently pull back to confirm that it is secure. This button on the right can be depressed when removing the tubing at the end. To look more carefully at the analog unit, you will notice the oxygen control lever is the on off button where you will set the total flow. The ball should hover approximately right in the middle of the line. The left control button is for nitrous oxide. If you look at the small silver numbers, they are an estimate of the nitrous oxide percentage. When you are moving these knobs, it is best to keep your hands on both knobs at the same time because one knob may adjust to the other ball as you are making changes. This button is the oxygen flush button, which you will push down to fill the reservoir bag or if there is a need during sedation. It may be that occasionally this connector comes out. If it does, you'll need to reattach it gently. Once you have attached all appropriate cords and tubing to their systems, you will need to utilize disinfecting wipes with the wipe wipe weight technique. We need to thoroughly disinfect the unit prior to placing barriers. This upper white portion needs to be particularly cleaned carefully as it rests ne next to the patient's face. This small white slider is used to snug the nasal hood around the patient's head. You need to wipe the unit and fully down the attachment levels and cords of the unit. You will notice that I am wearing gloves as I am disinfecting the unit. You are required to have full PPE on while you're disinfecting. However, you may notice that in the previous video, you may attach all three cords and systems without gloves to check to confirm they are working properly prior to the disinfection. Once you have wiped the unit twice, you can place a plastic barrier over the flow meter. As you're applying the plastic barrier, please pull it down as far as you can over the reservoir bag so that when you are using it during a procedure, you may adjust any knobs, buttons, or adjustment levels. You will now place the patient's nasal hood onto the white tubing. You'll notice that there are 
wide and narrow portions to the nasal hood attachment as well as the white tubes. This is the bottom portion of the nasal hood. This is the top portion that goes over their nose. When you are attaching any of the cords and tubing for these units, you need to verify that there is nothing twisted or looped. This may cause the unit to twist so that you cannot monitor correctly. Once everything is fully attached, you may take the nasal hood and tubing and gently, carefully place it over the flow meter until you are ready to use it. The next piece of equipment is the pulse oximeter. You will need to attach the power cord to the top portion of the unit. This unit is run by batteries. Once you depress the on-off button, you will notice words in the screen if the batteries are running effectively. You will then take the finger adapter and place it on the patient's index finger. You will note on the finger adapter that there is a small graphic to assist in placement. On the screen of the pulse ox oximeter, you can see the oxygen saturation and the patient's pulse. You will take three readings during the procedure. Please have the patient hold the unit in their lap so it is visible for the clinician at all times. The digital unit will be utilized for demonstrating an overview of the procedure. This is the power button for the digital unit, the oxygen flush button, the liters per minute of oxygen, liters per minute of nitrous oxide, and the percentage of nitrous oxide as you move the levels up and down. Once you turn the power button on, this is the total flow area. You will adjust the total flow based on the patient's respirations, and you can see the total flow of oxygen in this column. You will use the oxygen flush button to fill the reservoir bag to approximately two thirds full. The reservoir bag is helpful to observe patient respirations. You will then place the nasal hood over the patient's nose. Ask the patient to gently hold the nasal hood while you are adjusting the white tubing. You may adjust the patient's nasal hood by using the small slider on the back of the white tubing. You need to check with the patient to make sure the flow is sufficient that it is not too high and air is blowing around the top or you will need to add a small piece of gauze and not too low. If the total flow is either too high or too low prior to titrating nitrous, you can adjust it in the plus and minus arrows on the right. Once you are ready to titrate, you will confirm that they've been on for three minutes of 100% oxygen your first titration will be approximately one liter per minute. Note that you must write down the specific liters per minute as you adjust each time. Your second and any subsequent titrations need to be approximately in half liter increments. This is demonstrating a 20% nitrous flow. When you are completed, you take the nitrous level down to zero and the total flow of oxygen up to its original level. Once the patient has had a minimum of five minutes of 100% oxygen for recovery, you may ask them if they are feeling recovered, alert, and oriented. If that is the case, you may sit them into semi-supine and ask them again if they still feel fine. If that is accurate, you may loosen the tubing and remove the nasal hood. Please keep the oxygen flowing and the nasal hood ready were there to be any reason to reapply. 
You will then sit the patient into the fully upright position and ask them again if they feel recovered, alert, and oriented. These are two important words you will add to your legal documentation in the patient's chart. Once that is confirmed, you may turn off the unit.